Hidden deep within the Vietnamese jungle province of Kiang Bin lies a secret wonder of the world. That is, until 1991 when a local logger named Ho Khan made a spectacular discovery. While searching for agar wood alone in the forest, he became lost, but soon stumbled upon a massive rift in the limestone mountainside. Out from the opening came billowing clouds, the roar of rushing water could be heard, and a strong, constant gust of wind blew out from between the rocks. For fear of the unknown, Ho Khan explored no deeper than the entrance to this cave. Fifteen years go by until in 2006, Ho Khan speaks with two members of the British Cave Research Association, Howard and Deb Limbert, who traveled to Vietnam to discover new caves. Intrigued by Ho Khan's description, they seek him out and urge him to lead them to it. But after many failed attempts, Ho Khan could not rediscover what he had found by mistake all those years ago. It's not until 2009 that by pure chance, Ho Khan finds himself back at the entrance of this cave while on another hunt for wood. This time, he made sure to remember its exact location and contacted the Limberts immediately. They returned to Vietnam as fast as possible and, together with Ho Khan and a team of other explorers, they take man's first steps into the massive cavern in the mountains. It's uncovered that the cave runs 9 kilometers deep into the earth, with some parts reaching 200 meters high and 150 meters wide, large enough to fly a Boeing 747 inside. These dimensions make Ho Khan's discovery the largest cave on earth by volume, coming in at over twice the size of the next largest cave. In total, there's around 38.5 million cubic meters of empty space within this cave. That's nearly the same amount of space as the Grand Canyon, all hollowed out beneath the Annamite Mountains. But this isn't the Grand Canyon. This is Hang Song Jung. Translating very roughly into English, the name comes out as Cave of the Mountain River. This name comes from the fact that a stream of water pours out from the entrance of the cave, a river seemingly coming from within the mountain itself. Miles deep into the cave, jungles can be found inside its two dole lines, which are basically breaks in the roof of the cave caused by sinkholes, allowing sunlight to shine deep inside the earth. Exploring deeper inside this cave, you can find stalagmites that measure up to 80 meters tall, some of the tallest ever discovered. Even deeper and you can discover large cave pearls, some the size of baseballs, an occurrence so rare that you probably didn't even know cave pearls were a thing. Knowing all this, I think it's safe to say Hang Song Jung is not only a spectacular cave, but also one of the most impressive sites on the planet. But how exactly do caves like this form in the first place? Well, to understand this process, we actually need to start in the ocean. You see, sea creatures like crabs and corals, as well as tons of microscopic organisms, use the minerals dissolved in the ocean water to build their shells. When they die, their shells are left empty and fall to the ocean floor. Once this happens a few trillion more times, the shells will begin to build up into a layer. Over time, this layer of shells gets buried and buried and buried until it's under so much pressure that it becomes a single solid rock. We call this rock limestone. You've probably heard about it before and you've definitely seen it. It's a grayish white rock found in many cliffs and mountains. Then, depending on plate tectonics, this limestone might get pushed above the sea and that's how we get limestone on dry land and in mountains. If you're curious, this is what limestone looks like under a microscope. You can still see some of the skeletons of long dead sea creatures. Cool, right? Okay, so next we need to know what limestone is. Just a few seconds ago, I explained that sea creatures take minerals from the oceans to build their shells, and the primary material they do this with is called calcium carbonate. This is a really good building material because it's strong and it's readily available in the ocean and can dissolve easily in ocean water, so the materials get recycled and used by new organisms. That's important, remember that. Limestone dissolves easily, even in weak acids. Lastly, we need to know how the rain interacts with the atmosphere and the soil. Trust me, this will all make sense in just a second. So we all know how rain is made, but for anyone who missed that day in school, water from the ocean evaporates and maybe some water from trees evapotranspirates. Then this water collects and floats into areas of low pressures and low temperatures and condenses to become clouds. If this moist air becomes too saturated with water, some of it will precipitate out and fall to the earth. That's what rain is. But before that happens, while still in the clouds, the water molecules interact with the gases in the atmosphere. Some of the water will come in contact with carbon dioxide, and sometimes when they crash together, they create carbonic acid, a weak acid, but still an acid. Then when this slightly acidic rain falls to the earth and travels through the soil, it can pick up even more acids on the way down. Eventually, this acidic water sinks to the water table and becomes part of the groundwater. If this happens where there's a layer of limestone in the soil, this slightly acidic groundwater can 
eat away and dissolve it until a cavity in the earth is created, because, again, limestone dissolves easily, even in weak acids. This process can actually be remarkably fast in geologic terms. Hang Song Dung, for example, is only roughly 3 million years old. That's younger than the famous Australopithecus fossil and human ancestor Lucy, which is 3.2 million years old. Then, fissures, imperfections, and sinkholes can create entrances to these hollow tubes beneath the ground, and when they do, you have a cave. If the limestone is on the surface, it can instead be carved into cliffs and other strange and unique shapes. This type of landscape is called karst topography, and the more rainfall an area gets, the more karst topography can form and the greater number of caves and sinkholes there will likely be. That's why Howard and Deb Limbert were in rainy Vietnam looking for caves in the first place, and that's also why it's no surprise that Hung Song Dung is where it is, one of the wettest regions in the world. Now here's a rough map of where karst topography is to be found on Earth. You can see one of the biggest regions of karst topography is here in southeastern Asia, right where Hang Song Dung is to be found. In this area, you'll also find other strange karst formations like these famous mountains in China. Then, over here in the United States is perhaps the second biggest patch of karst features, and it's in this area that you'll find more famous caves like Mammoth Cave in Kentucky, which is the longest cave on Earth at over 650 kilometers long. But let's go back to how caves form. Depending on the size and shape of the limestone layer, a few different types of caves can be created. But almost always, a cave will have an entrance point where water can seep in, called a swallow, and a a point where the water empties out, a spring. In the case of Hang Song Dung, the spring is actually what we'd consider as the entrance, and the swallets would be the two holes in the cave ceiling caused by sinkholes. And that's essentially it. There are two things I should know before ending, however. First, while limestone is the most common rock type for caves to form in, any rock that dissolves in weak acids will form caves over time. So deposits of rocks like dolomite, gypsum, and even marble can become caves given enough time. But limestone is by far the most common. Second, this is how solution caves are made, and there are actually a few more types of cave, and each one forms in a different way. But solution caves are the most regularly occurring cave type, so I figured that would be the focus of this video. If you want to see another video on how any of the more rare cave types form, maybe give this video a like and subscribe. Oh, and I have a Twitter now, so if anyone is interested in getting updates when videos come out and such, here's how to find me. I'm not really used to the whole Twitter thing yet, but you'll be able to find me on there from now on. Anyway, I'll be back next week with another video. Thanks.